Hello, my name is Melanie Ribeiro from Philips Therapeutics Limited. Welcome again to another live session on a healthcare topic. Today we are live at the Oasis Speciality Hospital with Dr. Margaret Macanengo, who is a consultant psychiatrist with several years experience practicing in the field. We're here today to talk about mental health disorders. Dr. Macanengo, you we all know that October is World Mental Health Month, and this month we are commemorating World Mental Health Day, which was celebrated on the 10th of October. Uh, the theme of this year's World Mental Health Day is mental health in an unequal world. Would you like us to, to tell us something about this? Oh, Melanie, that is extremely important uh, because we have an increase in mental disorders, mental illness worldwide, not just in Kenya. Right. And uh, it's quite clear we don't have enough mental health uh, professionals to take care of people. Uh, as, for example, in Kenya, we are less than 200 psychiatrists. We're about 150 psychiatrists or less. And yet we have a population of about, what, 47 million? We, about 47 million. And if yeah. you look at the statistics of 47 million, we have about one in 10 people who have some kind of mental disorder. That's so true. you find, yeah, yeah, so not everybody is accessing mental health. And, and I think, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Dr. Tari, but with COVID, I think uh, worldwide, and I'm sure Kenya is part of that as well, the prevalence of mental health disorders has actually gone up. I was reading a report from the World Health Organization, and they were actually mentioning that one out of every four patients in Kenya who seek medical services actually have a mental health condition. Oh, that's very true. And that is a, a, a patient who is attending the hospital. When you look at the inpatients, it's actually higher. It's about 40% of patients in any general hospital have uh, a mental disorder. And wow. COVID definitely has contributed because in our practice, mm -hmm. we are seeing an increase in number of mental patients right. because of COVID. Yeah. And yeah. the reason is obvious. I mean, here's a disease which is so contagious and it's affecting our daily lives, our work, the way we socialize. You can't go to church, you can't go to, to work, you know, not, you yeah. can't even, uh, you have to live your healthy, normal activities like sports, etc. to go home early, you know. True. So it's really True. impacted on, okay. on the whole of society, I'm worldwide. Sure. And I'm sure, and yet COVID seems to be here to stay. So we really need to figure out what are the things that we can do to improve our mental health? I think, Melanie, we really have to be creative at this time. You know, like uh, learn, uh, look at uh, alternative ways like uh, engaging in physical exercise and, and reading and music and uh, some other activities mm -hmm. as well. Healthy coping activities. You know, mm -hmm. we need to be creative because a lot of us, we have a lifestyle where if it's not the work, it's the bar or it's, you know, and that's not a healthy activity. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. So give us some ideas. You mentioned exercise. Okay, exercise definitely has something in that um, when you exercise, your body secretes certain natural chemicals. We call them natural antidepressants. Okay. And, and you feel good. I think most people who are exercising, you'll find the day you go without exercising, you feel low, you feel dull. Mm -hmm. So, but when you exercise, you feel better. So, I agree with you 100%. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and then also diet, we have to eat well. Um, of course, too much meat and stuff is not good for our health, but lots of vegetables, lentils, and balanced diet. Mm -hmm. And then socializing. Uh, we need to, to, to socialize with positive um, people and positive things. Like if we are on social media and movies, let's look at good movies and positive kind of... Uh, sites because you know sometimes the social media has negative That's true. Uh, a lot of negativity you know some of the crime murder mm -hmm. and some of these kind of uh, movies on the social platform trigger mental illnesses oh i see oh yes yes okay. definitely okay. so we have to be careful what we watch and what we enjoy doing look for hobbies that are healthy mm -hmm. and that uh, enable us to enjoy so, wonderful, yeah. wonderful. So tell me, Dr. Makanyango, what could be some of the common mental health disorders that we have in Kenya? Okay, one of the commonest mental disorders we have in Kenya, and globally, I would say anxiety disorders. Mm -hmm. um, you know, anxiety is, uh, usually comes about when you're stressed, 
And uh, some little anxiety can be fine because it enables us to cope, to function on a daily basis. But when it's too much anxiety, it can create symptoms in you, like lack of sleep, palpitations, uh, restlessness, you cannot settle, you cannot uh, think properly, you cannot function properly. That's when now we call it a disorder. So anxiety is common. Then depression. Mm -hmm. Depression is common to a point that even suicide has increased as yeah. you've been checking the media. Right. Between April and June this year, over 500 people committed suicide in this country. Wow, that's so huge. we are concerned about suicide, increase in suicide, and uh, uh, those are some of the common conditions. Mm -hmm. And then drug abuse, that's drug true. abuse, that's alcohol true. abuse. Because some people have depression and they try to abuse drugs to feel better mm -hmm. and they don't know that they have depression or anxiety. Right. Yeah. Right. So they self-medicate only to feel worse. Mm -hmm. Drugs and alcohol like cannabis, Mira and others, and they, others. They, make, they cheat you that you're, you, 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 you're going to feel better. But after that, you're going to feel worse. You'll be dependent. You'll get the withdrawal symptoms. Right. And a bulk of them also end up committing suicide. That's, that's really very sad. So what can we do? How can we help our patients? There are medications available for some of these conditions, but can we manage anxiety, depression, maybe if they're mild forms, without medication initially? Oh, oh yes, you can manage uh, uh, mental disorders without medication, um, especially support and love from your neighbors, your family. So we are all, as Kenyans, we are, we are all our brother's keeper. We can participate by basically giving, giving an, a, a listening ear and giving them support, encouraging somebody to talk. When you see them changing, uh, you know, they're withdrawn, they're anxious, they're not themselves, then get involved. Instead of laughing at them or talking about them, ask them what's happening, right. you know, how are you feeling? So a listening ear, and then engage, uh, encourage uh, individual. Well, you know, once you talk, you allow somebody to talk, they feel better. They feel better. That's a so and true. then just the love and support from the family, a lot of them bounce back. A lot of them bounce back and are able to cope. So all of us really can help patients or can help our brothers, our sisters, our friends who have issues with anxiety and depression. Just by being there for them, just by speaking to them, listening to them, I think, as you said, Dr. Makanyango could be a life or death situation. A patient who is very depressed or, or getting there, you can actually pull them back from the precipice as such just by being there for them, talking to them and listening to them. That's true. That, that would really And, and also be able to identify and refer because obviously there are some cases we'll not be able to handle mm -hmm. so you need to refer them or take them to a nearby hospital, a counseling center or a psychiatric hospital, or even a facility. There are many facilities with counselors and psychologists, yeah. perhaps. Yeah. Yeah. I think even here at Oasis Mental, the Oasis yes. Health Speciality, you do have uh, specialists. Isn't it? Oh, definitely. Uh, here we do a whole range of, we have psychiatrists, we have psychologists. Mm -hmm. uh, we also do occupational therapy, okay. games therapy, music, spiritual therapy I've and all other kind of activities, games and jogging. And, yeah. yeah, but basically we just make our facility kind of be homely okay. so that you don't feel you're in a hospital. You feel you're in a home and you get all the support that you need. Nice, wonderful. Okay, now we talked about things you can do to help patients without medication. Perhaps you can tell us, are there medications to help these patients? Oh yes, yes. Uh, we have very good medication. When the anxiety is too much, when the depression is too much to a point that you can't wake up, you can't go to work, mm -hmm. you can't function, there's medication. Because the, the, the cause of these things is a chemical imbalance. Melanie, you're aware that uh, we have billions of nerves in our brain. And the brain is a connection of many, many nerves and they are transmitters that allow us to, to be the way we are. So if the transmitters are lower than normal, then you can get depression. So we have medication which actually correct these transmitters. Within two to three weeks, you find your, yourself. You're able to smile, laugh, go back to work. Mm -hmm. And then, um, so, so for some time, you may take it three months, six months, mm -hmm. 
there are some who have to take for life, unfortunately, depending on their condition. On their condition. But they are working well, they are effective, effective. effective, they are functioning well. Fantastic. You cannot know. So there is hope. There's hope. Basically, if a patient has mental health disorders mm -hmm. and the counseling, the talking, being there yes. is helping but not sufficiently, we have medication that are helping That's our patients. True. Now, true. some patients who take these medications do experience some side effects. Mm -hmm. Maybe you could comment on that? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Uh, 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 Melanie, there's no medicine which doesn't have side effects, uh, even paracetamols and all those. But uh, the important thing is to alert the patient early enough about the side effects. Not not all of them will, will experience those side effects. Yeah. But even when they do experience, uh, you advise them what to do. In some cases, the body adjusts. Within three to four weeks, you find somebody is able to yeah. now not feel the side effects. Yeah. But for those whose side effects are persistent, we change to a medication that is a lot safer. Right. So that they are able to still they get They should better. basically talk to their doctors. Yes. I know we have a lot of newer medications which are much better tolerated as yes. well yes. than some of the older medications that we used to use 30 or 40 years that's ago when true. we started, yeah. right? Yeah, so there are many options out there for our patients and they should not feel that, you know, they need to suffer through. True. There are solutions. Yeah, this is what we're solutions. trying to tell people out there. Yes. Great. Great. So, so stress. Stress is a major factor when it comes to mental health disorders, am I right? Oh, definitely, Melanie. Um, everybody experiences stress. Some stress is good for you, uh, you know. Uh, no stress is bad for you. If you're totally not stressed, you're just going to be like a deflated balloon <laughs> sitting and doing nothing. But uh, too much stress is, is, is uh, dangerous, especially if it's continuous and it's, uh, you know, cumulative. Mm -hmm. Because that's when you can now develop a mental illness mm -hmm. because your body cannot cope anymore. True. Yeah. yeah. True. Yeah. So uh, what are some of the things that we can do? Again, we're boiling down again to mm -hmm. things like exercise, which are major stress relievers, yeah. you know, playing games and... Yeah, balance your life. Mm -hmm. uh, have enough time. The normal working hours are okay, but you have to have a break in between and uh, do something else. If you're working, there, there are people who are workaholics that... You know, they're working until late hours in the night. They don't have enough rest. You have to have enough rest, enough sleep, enough water, enough social life. And we are talking of healthy lifestyle. Yeah. So because the balance in your, uh, life, the balance in your life tends important. to minimize stress. Mm -hmm. And spirituality, in, 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 interestingly, uh, spirituality has been scientifically proven to reduce stress in individuals by 29% and wow. they live longer Amazing. than people who are not spiritual. So I think holistic life, a wellness uh, uh, life includes spiritual exercise, diet, jogging, take enough water, etc. Et okay, mm -hmm. great. So how do I, as an individual, realize that somebody in my family, one of my friends, one of my co-workers is developing a mental health condition and how can I help them? Melanie, if you've stayed with somebody for a long time and you know them well, when they, they change, you notice they don't wake up as the time they used to, uh, they don't, they're more irritable and aggressive, mm -hmm. they lock themselves in the room the whole day. A change in the personality of the person, that tells you that something is happening that's not right. Okay. They can't go to work, you know, you have to get involved, we have to ask, we have to find out what's happening. Because that okay. could be an early sign that somebody is developing a and, mental and disorder. And how do I then get this person to accept that they may have a problem and that they need to go and see a specialist? Yeah, uh, this can be challenging. A number of patients usually are very receptive. And a majority of our patients, when the relatives mention that, they are willing and they come. But we have a group of very sick patients who have to literally be... be, be carried here, literally. Yeah. Yeah. But the beauty is that when they improve, they are so thankful. Within a week or so, you find, uh, you know, the patient is so thankful that I'm glad yeah. you helped me. You know, now I'm well. <laughs> so it depends on the patient. But we all have to be involved in encouraging them. Wonderful. So, uh, Dr. Makanyengo, apart from what we've talked about, the stress, maybe the alcoholism and the drug abuse and all of that, what else can trigger a psychiatric or a mental health condition? The, the commonest is just too much stress. Uh, genetic, may, you know, there's a family history. Sometimes your, your grandparents or your parents had a similar illness. Okay. So there's a 10 to 50 percent of a chance for example, somebody with bipolar disorder to inherit bipolar disorder. Wow. Okay. Uh, 
Okay. Uh, and then alcoholism, we've noticed you find an alcoholic coming in, his grandfather was alcoholic, his father was alcoholic, so the, the genetic factor is, uh, is, is it makes yeah. them more vulnerable. Okay. But it doesn't mean that if my grandfather was an alcoholic, definitely I will be as well. I mean, obviously there are things. Yeah. But we, we try to tell patients, if you have family history of mental illness, then take care. Get involved in a wellness program. Avoid stress. Right. Have people to talk to. Because then you're more at risk. That's the truth. But you can prevent it. You can prevent yeah. it. Yeah, yes. Now, let's talk about chronic diseases. We have a number of patients in our country who have HIV, diabetes, cancer, and so many of these other chronic diseases. There is an aspect of depression and anxiety that comes with the diagnosis of these chronic diseases. Could you comment on that? Oh yes, uh, the, 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 a lot of patients with chronic diseases have also a mental illness, d disorder of some nature, normally depression and anxiety. Uh, but if uh, during diagnosis, we should first of all, before you even diagnose somebody with a chronic illness, whether it's HIV or cancer, you have to engage them early, talk to them, tell them what you're going to test for, and then tell them, in case they are positive, how you're going to handle them. Because once you prepare such a person, and then they give consent, you, when you prepare such a person, they tend to take it better and able to cope better and less likely to develop a long-term mental illness. So it's also very important for our healthcare providers to yeah. actually talk to the patients prior to even doing the diagnosis if they do suspect yeah. any of these chronic illnesses. Yeah. Um, I'm hoping that we are offering counselling as well to some of these chronic illnesses. For all illnesses, I believe counselling should be offered in all hospitals um, to all patients, yeah, because that is, is a way of mitigating or reducing the chance of developing psychological Great. problems. We're getting a number of questions in from our audience, Doc, so I'm going to just read out some of them to you, and if you don't mind, you can just try and answer them. Um, so, um, especially in COVID, during COVID times, uh, people are asking, how do they ensure that their mental health is safeguarded? What we just said is just uh, engage in a wellness program, engage in a routine, create a routine. You know, when you wake up, you say, okay, there's lockdown. Uh, we need to, to um, be in the house. Mm -hmm. Sit with a pen and paper and develop a routine, right? Um, so when you wake up, don't zuba. You know, when you zuba too much. <laughs> Yeah, uh, right. some exercise, yeah. some reading, engage your children, your family, you know. And right now with the technology, these Zoom meetings, you find a lot of people are able, I've discovered they can actually work yeah. uh, from home. That's true. And uh, again, others are in my, even marketing. I've seen people who are marketing their ways on Facebook. And, so and then, yeah, yeah, so that you sell your product, you just send a rider, and somebody's able to, you know, creativity. True. So let's be creative, and there's so much we can do, and you find your day ends uh, when you're actually feeling a lot better. I'm, I'm actually concerned about some of our elderly patients. You know, we have a lot of elderly relatives, and you're talking about, you know, going on social media, Facebook, Zoom. Many of them don't know how to do any of this, and they could be alone in their houses. They don't have any interaction. I th how would you think the rate of depression in these elderly patients would be higher? De definitely, being alone, that is a, one of the contributing factors, especially to the elderly. But interestingly, M Melanie, I was up country during a lockdown time, and, and I found people, the elderly, they're just managing well because they go out to the garden, they farm, you know, there's so much. <laughs> That's <laughs> up country. That's up country. In Nairobi, they're probably yes. locked in a, a small apartment somewhere. Yes. Their, their kids or, you know, grandkids or whoever are scared to go and visit them because they might infect them. them. And, and truly, a number of them have depression, have had major depression. Mm -hmm. It's really been an issue. Mm -hmm. So you're quite right. Um, that the, so the, the something we have to be creative on how we to engage our grandmothers and our elderly. Yeah. 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 Uh, 
at home during this difficult time. Yeah, yeah. because I think they miss that personal interaction because yes. all their lives they've been, you know, so used to interacting with people and now people are saying, well, I can't come and see you because yeah. I might bring you COVID. That's true. You know, yeah. they're at higher risk and all of that. So yes. let's try and get them vaccinated so that maybe they can actually go out and, and, relate, to yeah, and relate to them. Okay, great. Um, we have a question about corporates. Could there be a role that corporates could play in the mental health of their employees? Oh, that's a good question. I used to work in Kenyatta in, in mental health and uh, what we had, we had an employment assistance program and a counseling uh, setup so that um, uh, any staff member who needed help, needed to talk to somebody, would actually seek help. Mm -hmm. I believe every corporate and every institution should have a mental health unit. It should not just be hospital-based, right. a company-based, institution-based, school-based. Because right. right now we've had kids actually uh, with depression. The youngest child uh, between uh, who I know committed suicide was nine years old. Oh, yeah. dear. So school-based, institution-based, corporate-based, we need mental health services in all these facilities. Mm -hmm. At least a counsellor, somebody counselor, they can talk yeah. to yeah. if they had an a issue. Yeah, yes. and as you said, as a peer, be there for your colleagues, yeah. be there for your friends, yes. be there for your relatives as well. Yes. Okay. Uh, we have another question from uh, one of the audience, and she says that her mom has been withdrawn ever since losing her job. How can she help her? Uh, when uh, one loses something, not just the job, it could be losing your house or lose a loss, you, you, you're likely to be depressed and some even get loss and grief. But also just losing a job, you know, where is she going to get her income? So definitely she needs help, she needs somebody she can talk to and if possible she can come in for assessment so that we can see the degree, you know, the, the earlier she comes in the better because then you know, we can just do an assessment and be able to do an intervention in good time. Otherwise, it's likely to get worse if not well handled. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. So the su suggestion is let the patient come in and then they can be assessed. Perfect. Thank you. We have uh, a few questions about children and adolescents. So one of the questions is, does the environment my children grow up in have an effect on their mental health? Oh, definitely. Uh, even just the home environment, a home environment where there's violence, there's poor parenting, the parents themselves are not even communicating, those children are likely to develop mental problems. And we see, the, we see them with a lot of bitterness, a sense of rejection, and uh, they develop problems. So the home environment is one, that's why we encourage that a, a happy family with parents who are communicating and, you know, uh, is likely to prevent mental disorders. But as well as schools, right now we have a problem with the school environment. Um, I, I appreciate the government in trying to get a good education system. But you see, if you look at the hours, children end up sleeping at 11 and waking up at 4 a.m., 3 a.m. to read. That environment is creating children who are having mental illnesses mm -hmm. and are going to have problems. And, and I'm hoping that this is something that the government is going to address. Yeah. The, the hours, you know, somebody needs to have enough sleep, need to have a creative program, a, a, a child, and time to break, time to play, time to to exercise, you know, and these are some of the, so again, the challenges. The school environment, to the yeah. Balance, the, balance the, the balance between their work, between school, between family time. Y yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the proper psychological needs of these people have to be addressed. Even as we develop curricula and all that, we have to include them there. And the parents also being so busy that they don't have time to spend with their children, yeah. to talk to their children, mm -hmm. to find out what's happening in their children's lives, you yeah. know, just at the end of the day, how was your day, yeah. what did you do, you know, that kind of thing I think would make a big difference as well. True, because yeah. we have to nurture these children. That's true. So again, uh, still talking about children but now going to adolescents, there's a question about peer pressure and, you know, can peer pressure really affect these children and I think here the issues about drug abuse. Yeah, majority of the children we're having, uh, the majority of the patients we have uh, admitted to drug abuse, they started it in school and uh, it's from a friend. So 
peer pressure is one of the leading influences that, that uh, expose people to drug abuse, etc. So that is a, an, a core area that we have to address in school by the mental health unit, like we say, should be in every school and uh, children have been, should be given uh, life skills and social skills to be positive peer influencers to, to their, their schoolmates. Mm -hmm. and, and that's my, my feeling. Yeah. So that a kid comes from school with a you know, positive, positive yeah, outlook, and, uh, outlook and, and uh, yeah. Okay, okay. So let's try and get our school children to be more positive yes. and to be a positive influence on their that peers right. rather than a negative. Let's yeah. try and reduce the bullying as well. well. Oh, oh, bullying is so traumatic. I yeah. tell you, Melanie, when you see kids coming here when they are bullied uh, by, by the students, it's just so bad. And unfortunately, some teachers turn a blind eye and the headmaster would even laugh when you report, oh, my son was bullied. He says, that's normal. But they, the, 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 yeah, I get, I, we get them. We receive that. And, and so the kid comes forward so traumatized, then suicidal. So this is something that the, the government have to take on very seriously. Sure. Because, sure. yeah. Okay, so I think I hope that message has landed for any teachers out there, any students out there. Let's try and reduce the bullying. Let's have a positive yeah. peer pressure rather than a negative yeah. so that the psychological aspect of the children in school Our is... Members. Exactly, exactly. So uh, we have somebody who's asking about post-traumatic stress disorder, uh, PTSD, and they're asking, can they fully recover from mental illness, especially after being diagnosed with PTSD? Oh, post-traumatic stress disorder is so bad, Melanie. We see it a lot in people who have been exposed to life-threatening events like the refugees, mm -hmm. where they come from, the horror stories, what they go through. Um, so these are just symptoms that you develop um, after a trauma. And uh, they, they can really make you not function. You can't leave your house. You tend to avoid situations that remind you of the symptom. You tend to be so sensitive. Any loud noise makes you jump. And, and you know, you're, you're so sensitive. And then you keep re-experiencing that event. For example, if it's an attack by some people who attacked your home with gun, you know, you, you keep hearing, you just keep re-experiencing. Right. So it makes you like a prisoner. You can't leave your house. You, you, you are constantly suffering. Mm -hmm. Yes, they, we do help them. First is to remove them from that environment. That's the first thing. Okay. Put them in a safe place and then uh, give them their basic needs. Yeah, And then they need some counseling, interpersonal uh, counseling, uh, therapy, where they are able to get back to normal and just build on the reserves that they have. You know, we, we all have reserves to, to move on in life, you know, and uh, just support them in building up on the reserves. Some need medication because they are so anxious, they can't sleep, they are so scared, mm -hmm. and uh, we give them medication to reduce, them something to help, uh, to, to help them. Okay. But it would take long. Some recover soon, one year, others can take uh, four, five years, or many years, but it depends on the environment, where they have their basic needs and the support that and they and have. The support. I think the yeah. support could be very, very important yes, there. Right. But yes, yes, they, they, do, they, they, can, can, they can definitely yes. recover. That's wonderful news. That's yeah. very positive for our patients. Mm -hmm. So at least they know that there's hope yeah. with the right support, with the right counseling and the right medication if necessary. True. Anyone with PTSD can really recover. Yes, yes. That's wonderful. Um, so can mental illness resolve on its own with improved life circumstances? Oh yes, uh, we, we've had people develop a, a mental illness maybe during a specific time as a result of a specific pressure or environmental stress at that time. And after that subsided, even without medication, you, you know, the person, it subsides on its own, okay. perhaps, uh, okay. so yes. Yeah, so, so if whatever is causing that patient the stress in the first place, that's if true. it goes away, yeah. then, then the patient could actually, actually recover. recover. Yes. Okay, that's great. Um, oh, the, the questions are flowing in. Okay, so as a parent, how do I take note of my child's changing behavior and their mental health? Um, you have to understand your child. It depends on the age of your child, you know, like uh, the age of a, a five-year-old, a ten-year-old. A five-year-old will play, will interact, will laugh, will be, you know, running around. When you find a change that the child is no longer playing with other kids, the child is crying a lot, 
and, and, and even it may not even be you, even the teacher will tell you, uh, your son is not doing so well, Ac academic performance goes down. goes down, there's change yeah. in this child, then you know that there's a concern, so you have to find out why. Mm -hmm. And we have to relate with the child in a way that they're free, because we've come across cases where a child is being abused sexually or okay. whichever, and yeah. Uh, yeah. the child is so terrified, cannot tell the parent, but it's the teacher who's the first person who can detect, oh, there's something happening. So, uh, so, so you see, as parents, we have to really be close with our children and listen to them and believe them, uh, you know. Uh, not just cane a child whenever they, whenever they or when you see a change right. in a child, be concerned and look at why are they changing, right. and be right. yeah. and ask for help if you can't handle it. I mean, yeah. obviously not every patient, uh, parent, and mm -hmm. you know are capable. You may not be capable of handling yes. every issue. Yeah. There are people out there who can help them. There are counselors, the yeah. church, the yeah. mosque, or whichever religious, as you said, the spiritual guidance counselors as yeah. well, yeah. can really give some help. We have child therapists who are able to actually, through games and drawings and toys and engaging the child, you're able to come out with a diagnosis and, and realize yeah. from this drawing, this picture basically tells you that the problem is the parents or the problem, there's another problem in yeah. this house. Yes. Yeah. So you can find a different way to get the child yes. to disclose uh, yeah, we what do the that. issue could be. Yeah. Okay, so there's a question here about can people with mental health issues be effective at work? Uh, oh yes. Um, Again, I really commend Kenyatta National Hospital where I used to work. Yes, and and then I, I used to, yeah, yeah. I, I, the people we were managing with mental health, chronic mental health issues, they were on medication, they were so effective and they were working well. So it does not mean that if you have a psychiatric condition and you're on medication, you have to be stigmatized and mm -hmm. sent home. No. Mm -hmm. Yes, with medication, you can work. Okay. And, and a lot of people around us are, are under medication, but you can't know. So we have professionals, we have, we have professionals yeah. and, and leaders who are uh, under medication for mental disorders, but they are so well, you cannot tell. So yes, they can work. Okay, so coming a bit very close to home, Dr. Makanyango, there's a question about doctors mm -hmm. and the increasing rate of suicide amongst doctors. Okay. And there's people are asking, could there be a mental health issue? That, that's a good question because uh, there's a big concern now for care of the health care provider. Mm -hmm. You know, by the time you've seen or interacted with so many patients in one day, you, the kind of stories you get, some like, you know, some, some are, are very negative, you're likely to be influenced because we are not stones. We are human beings, we have emotions, so we get affected. So I, I'm not surprised that suicide has gone up. Uh, what we, we now need to improve is provide mental health services for health care providers. It's hard for a doctor to go for help than someone who's not a doctor. Because there's this feeling, I'm a doctor, and we make the worst patients. But we need to go for help. We need to talk to people. We need to go for therapy. In mental health, we're supposed to have therapy every week. But a lot of us are not doing that, you right, see. Right. So, yeah. So, health for the healthcare provider is extremely important. Okay, mm. so let's be there for our doctors as well. Yes, and the doctors they need support. That, that they can get support. support That's well. true. Okay, so there's a question here. Is it true that people with mental health illness have low intelligence? Oh, no, that is not true. <laughs> or <laughs> okay. character. There's two uh, things yeah. here. People are asking, is it low intelligence or could it be a weak character? It cuts across the board. We have professionals, we have uh, the engineers, uh, doctors, Brilliant and people, people who have not gone care. to school. Mm -hmm. Anybody can get mental illness. It's not about intelligence. It's a transmitter, that imbalance, and it depends on the genetics. It depends on... We, are, we have different resilience, you see. Yeah. What I can stand when I'm stressed is maybe different from what somebody else can stand. Mm -hmm. So we have different personalities and resilience. Uh -huh. uh, but... Uh, it's not true about intelligence. What was the other question? The character. Could it be a weak character? Uh, personalities. Uh, defining what is weak is tricky. What may be weak uh, in an individual may be strong in another situation in a different person. So right. I would not label them as weak. 
but uh, we have different strengths, we have different weaknesses, and everybody has a weakness and everybody has a strength. So uh, I would just say our uh, different personalities, our uh, resilience to stress is mm -hmm. different, mm -hmm. and, and maybe we just now need to enjoy, uh, and embrace healthy coping uh, mechanisms to help us know how to deal with stress better. Okay. Yeah, so we can all be able. So there's a concern here from a parent who says that their son is eating a lot of late and has added two kilograms in the span of two months. Is this a behavior they should be concerned with? Okay, there's an age where uh, boys eat, and you know, like high school. I know many from, from one, from two, they eat, could finish a <laughs> loaf of bread. and So maybe it depends on the age of that uh, young man. Is he in the age where he's growing? Because mm -hmm. you've seen a young man, you see him today, a few months later he's taller than you, and you just yes. want. Yeah, so it could depend on, on the age and the needs of the body. But could there? But uh, they are eating, disorder. yes, like uh, in some people when they are depressed, they eat a lot mm -hmm. because they, they, that is their solace for comfort, you know. True. Uh, they eat a lot. Others will not eat at all. So, so it could it, be it, 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 I think it's for concern, but also we should understand mm -hmm. uh, what, you know, we have to understand. Is it within the normal eating a lot or is it an abnormal, due yeah. to an abnormal yeah. factor? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Great. So um, there is a concern here about reproductive health mm -hmm. and depression, particularly for couples. I know many cases of couples who are trying to conceive, you know, infertility causes a lot of depression as well. And then the depression can also impact on the fertility. So <laughs> reproductive health and mental health is a wide topic, touching not only on infertility, but even on no, normal sexual interaction for married couples it, it's, yeah. a, it's a problem and um, um, it's definitely an issue especially in fertility but we have uh, medical professionals gynecologists experts who will be able to do thorough investigation and be able to help where possible yeah. uh, to restore that fertility and, and people are, will get children but the, your peace of mind is very important when you're trying to get children you know when you're stressed you're you likely stress, yes. chances of and then relationship with your yeah. spouse relationship with your spouse has to be very um, you know because some some people are living in homes Melanie they don't talk they're sleeping in different rooms I mean sure. how do you expect yeah. to have a normal fertility or you know reproductive health relationship you know True. So it depends on relation and all those factors. So communication, perhaps during communication. marriage, during relationships. Yeah. Would that yeah. be important in reducing communication, the chances of getting relationship, depressed? loving? You know, there are people who I don't know how. Maybe they were raised. They don't know how to be loving. You know, True. for you, love is shouting and being. You know, you <laughs> need to learn how to be. They say tender, loving care, and that tender, loving care is what attracts. Uh, your opposite spouse yes. yeah yeah and then communicate on issues if it's financial issues then communicate and work towards uh, supporting each other because sure. sometimes issues bring infertility bring uh, lack of communication yeah, yeah. So talking about communication, so we've heard, and there's been a lot of this in the media, that men have an issue with communication and therefore even the rates of suicide are higher. Can you comment on that? <laughs> okay, in general men have had a higher, women tend to get more depression than men, okay. uh, that, that's true. Mm -hmm. But I, I assume that maybe because women cope better, we are in charmas, you, you go to church more, you. You, you, you share with your friend as compared to a man who feels it's, it's a sign of weakness to, to talk to about talk the about problems. The yeah, that could be a factor because you are ventilating. And we encourage men to be able to, to have an opportunity to also talk to somebody. Uh, and then it depends on that society. Expectations of a man, you know, sometimes it's wrong, you know, but yeah, you find yeah. it affects... Uh, that like a man they're cannot human. Cry, you cannot... Uh, they're human, yeah. but they are affected. Our men are also very much affected. Our men are also abused by women. And it may not be physical abuse, it can be psychological abuse. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, but then who do they go to? Where do they turn to? And... Uh, we, we are encouraging them to reach out and we will help them. Great. Yeah. Is that um, what you'd like to tell the men or do you have yeah. any other message for the men out there who 
um, you know, have a higher tendency to maybe suicide or... Yeah, there's some help. Uh, reach out to people, even in confidence, even through online sessions, mm -hmm. but reach out to somebody, okay. even as a so friend. And then the negative coping strategy of drinking is never a solution. It actually, you get worse. You spir spiral into a worse situation. Right. Yeah, so we are there and we will we, we'll be a people, be there are people who can help them. them, yes. So, so tell me, are there any support groups for mental health patients or people who, you know, if they don't have anyone to talk to, who do they reach out to? Yes, uh, I, I'm not aware of how many, but that's an idea, Melanie, that... Let's say here we, at, uh, at Oasis. Yeah, we are running mental health support groups every Fridays, every Mondays we run a addiction support group on, on Thursdays we also run some spiritual therapy support groups mm -hmm. and then Friday psychological support groups right. and and we are open to even having a support group for, for the general public for people who need to just come in once a month mm -hmm. and we are open to have that because okay. it helps because so you learn from your needs uh, to join a support group they yeah can just they, they can out reach out to them. us okay yeah um, um, so, so there there's some questions, questions here, here about, about um, uh, the stigma associated with mental health and people are asking why is mental health not treated like any other illness? Why are we stigmatizing? I think it's just a, a negative attitude and we have very negative names for people with mental illnesses like Mwendazimu mm. uh, in other communities you, you know you find a, your local language there's usually a very bad name but that's not fair because the brain just like any part of the body can go sick, you know? It's not like, and, and then again, anybody can get sick. So if you're laughing or stigmatizing somebody, what of yourself, you know? So yeah. we have to be our brother's keeper, accept them, embrace them, and, and, and then that you have a better society. Okay, we're almost towards the end, Dr. Makanyango. Uh, so there's a question about what role can the media play in highlighting mental health issues? I believe the media has done a, a wonderful job in this month. I've seen a lot of coverage on mental health, but may, we, may it not just be done during the World Mental Health Month? Could it be just a continuous basis that we cover, we sensitize the public on mental health issues mm -hmm. and how to avoid uh, mental illnesses, etc.? But I really commend them for what they have done so far. We continue, <laughs> we continue to, to talk about to highlight the mental health issue that's true. and stop stigmatizing mental yeah. health issues as well. Yeah. So um, we've been asked, how do we stop the vicious cycle of mental health from propagating in the society? There are a lot of issues that could be contributing, uh, like for example, lack of jobs, economic challenges, uh, the issue. So primarily. Uh, is perhaps if we, we have to look at cre sorry, creation of employment. Okay. Yeah, when people can have something to do, employment issues and also good role modeling, yeah, so that parents and, and teachers, the whole society is involved because yeah. everybody plays a role to play. Uh, everyone has a role to play in the kind of situation that we have. Okay. And uh, the government is trying but we need all sectors to be involved yeah okay maybe i can ask you for your parting shot is there any last words that you would like to just to remind everybody you're your your brother's keeper mm -hmm. and uh you need to know you have to be there for your friend or your relative and uh it's it's good to know that at least just give a listening ear and just try to ask you know or try to monitor if there are any changes in your family, yeah, or any relative, any changes that could be a early sign of mental health. And, it, you know, understand what are the signs of mental health. And then know that there are places you can refer the patient or even through online uh, sessions, there are places you can contact, uh, the patient can contact to get help. So we have to be involved and, uh, by caring and concern about our 
brothers and sisters and families. Okay, yeah. maybe you'd like to say one or two words on what uh, services Oasis Specialty Hospital offers for mental health patients? Okay, uh, Oasis Health Specialty Hospital is now our fourth year. It's a facility which is kind of uh, homely. We provide inpatient and outpatient services. Uh, for outpatients, you can come in, be assessed, be seen, get treatment, get either counseling or medication or both, and then you go home and we follow you up. We also admit patients who are having addiction, depression, uh, bipolar disorder, other conditions. But uh, our facility is kind of a homely facility. We have a lovely environment with trees and birds and fresh beautiful air, gardens. beautiful gardens, <laughs> and lots of um, games, uh, basketball, table games, you know, among other activities. Uh, physical therapy and others and uh, we try to encourage our staff to be friendly and loving because I think ideally this is the kind of environment that one needs to recover but we are we, we also work with other uh, partners and other other institutions okay. to ensure that uh, our patients get the best All right. Thank you so much, Dr. Margaret Makanyango, a consultant psychiatrist at the Oasis Health Specialty Facility uh, in Piponi Road, Nairobi. Thank you so much for joining us today in our live discussion. Have a good day. Thank you.